As you move on across the screen, you see object name. This is where you would type in the name of the target object that you're going to image. You can see that I've typed in M13 and I use an underscore to give a little separation there. It makes it a little easier to see for me in the folder later. Underneath the, uh, the name of the object, you'll see the save process. The save process includes the file type that you're saving your exposures to, and it also includes how you're saving them. In, for this example, I'm using Save All Uncombined Images, and I'm saving the FITS files. Underneath that, right now it says number of images. Uh, don't pay any attention to that. This box will change and update as you're taking your photos. This block is very important, or this button, save process. When you open the save process dialog, you'll see that you have uh, two blocks of information here that need to be set. First is file type. Go ahead and open the file type, file types tab and you'll see that the Envisage software can save your exposures to BMP, GIF, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, FITS, FITS3P, and FITSINT. The important thing to remember about these file types is that only FITS, FITS3P, and FITSINT use the full dynamic range of the camera, which means the exposures are 16-bit exposures. Uh, if you're using, for example, JPEG, GIF, or BMP, you're using an 8-bit file format. Normally when I'm using the DSi, I use FITS files. Because this tutorial is for a first-time user and we want to make it as easy as possible, let's use JPEG. You can see that when I switch to JPEG, this block over here changed somewhat. It now tells me that JPEG is a compressed file type, that it's 24-bit color, and that it's compatible with Photoshop, and it's also okay to use this file type on the web. So if you're going to be sharing your, your uh, photos on a website or in a gallery, uh, the JPEG file type will suffice. Save options, if you open this dialog, it gives you a number of ways to save your files. I'll talk about each of them briefly. Normal operation does not save anything other than the stacked exposure or the stacked photo to disk. So you lose your individual exposures and all you have is your final product on, on, on the uh, hard drive when you're done. Save every composite image will save every time the DSI stacks a new incoming exposure onto your, the building photo on your screen it'll save that composite of the image. Save All Uncombined saves, saves all the exposures that you take, regardless of whether they're stacked on your screen or not. Save All Raw Images, well, raw images are totally unprocessed by the software. They're in the native size of the DSi chip. They're not upsampled to 648 by 480. And you have all the data that's coming out of the camera. Uh, you also have save a time-lapse sequence. If you want to, for example, make a time-lapse movie of uh, Jupiter rotating, and you also have webcast so that you can do a webcast over the internet. Several users are doing this and it's pretty neat. For me, I always use save uncombined images, and the reason I do that is because of something should happen within the software that affects my final photo, I want to have all of the individual saved exposures so I can go back and start over post-capture. I'm going to click OK to get rid of this. 